All right, I'm going to show you a little bit about what RPL for the Prime acts like. So first we're going to try to go to invoke it. Okay, bring up the Prime calculator. Now, let's look at the apps. I already got an app RPL. But while we're looking at that, let's shift and look at programs. Notice we're almost a megabyte. Not bad considering what it does. Okay, so let's hit run just for just for yucks. I don't know what happened there. Let's get out of that. Let's do it the normal way. Enter. Okay. 25, 6. All right, there you go. Standard RPN. Uh, 1. Two, three, four, five. Uh, we can move up and down the stack and let's pick 150 escape and bring it in. All right. Um, let's exit, hit view escape. Okay, and we're now in home mode, whatever. It's, we're just not there. Want to get back to what we were doing, hit view. Bring that up, hit enter, we're back. Okay, if you escape and then enter from the top, it runs RPL from the beginning. It cleared the stack. Didn't change anything else. We didn't lose anything but what was on the stack. Now let's write a program. We have all these templates. Okay, let's just pick the standard RPL and let's do a local variable okay alpha a alpha b alpha alpha a space b take off the shift multiply oops well you don't really need the space okay and let's duplicate it but let's let's save it okay Let's call it M P one. Okay, hit shift and store. And let's look at variables. There's our variable list, MP. It was just stored in there. Okay, we already created one called MP two earlier. Let's let's look at that one. It's actually no, it's a little bit bizarre. Multiply and add three. Okay, let's put a couple numbers for. Five, oops. Just enter. Swap it. Five. Swap it. Okay, now we're can ready to execute. Two things on the stack. Take two arguments, and hit eval. Twenty. Okay. Uh, four, five. Just to show you the stored version 20 and hit 4 5 and hit that other one the one that added 3 okay we can also um, do a test let's if then and in unlike RPL on the 48 or 50 we don't need to protect these structures Okay, this will not evaluate until we hit evaluate or put it in brackets and hit eval. So say if three and now get some tests functions equal equal is what we picked last. Then what we want to do is print the word T T. Yeah, H R E E. I, I barely can read this keyboard. No, the letters are invisible to me. Okay. Okay. So if, if we see a three on this tag, we print three. Otherwise, we don't do anything. <coughs> okay. So let's create a few copies of it. Cause I don't feel like typing it in. Let's put two on the stack and hit eval. Nothing. Let's put three on the stack swap it now hit eval 
Yeah, I mean magic, like magic. Okay, so you can you can enclose all this stuff. Um, let's let's hit this. We've got all the cast functions, and it just doesn't go. It just goes on and on and on. And we can hit a letter. Um, let's hit alpha F. There's F. And let's look. Ooh. Let's look for, like for factorial. Hmm. I know it's here. There it is, factorial. Uh, obviously, it, it just created an algebraic expression, the factorial of the string, the name three. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's put four in there. It, it remembers what we last did. Okay, factorial is 24. Let's put factorial of that. It should be interesting. It's a pretty big number, okay? And I think it'll probably break, but hit factorial. Yeah, I don't know what it... I'm not sure what this kind of expression is. I think it just deferred it. Okay, so anyway, uh, notice that in terms of knowing what the indicators are, if you hit alpha, you get a red bar, okay? And that means, okay, hit it twice, locks it in, it's green. I gotta remember these, but, and we're in the alpha mode, okay? And now hit shift, and that's an uppercase. So if you want, but if you want uppercase, shift alpha alpha locks uppercase. And the colors, eventually you can learn them. So we, we added a string in there. And two and six. And now put three and now hit menu and we get object that takes things apart, turns something into cast, turns something into a note. Uh, and, and the last one here, to a list. We just created a list and you know how it works. Break up the list, the two, three things on the list, put it back, uh, and then obviously a list of lists. Okay. Um, there, there's arbitrarily more stuff here. There are menus, if you push shift memory, we're going to show you all the things in the user's memory. I think it didn't work. Shift, shift, mem. There we go. Okay, these are all the functions. Okay. All right, but basically all this is doing is showing you all the functions and this level of the user directory and their types. So MP1 is a program. The internal tags for all these things are do this, do that. It's kind of like the 48 internals, but, you know, it's just names. And do LVS, do program, do program. Okay, so some of these are programs, some of these are just local variable structures, some are lists. Okay, if you hit it, it will bring it up. This is a very interesting list. The other way is uh, shift menu. No. I'm about to create a new keyboard and do some graphics. Make the letters so I can read them and put the correct legends for all the overrides I've done on these things. Okay, and I'll probably leave the landscape view of this with the official legends, okay? But, and this is only gonna work on the emulator version. I have no idea how to, to modify the code on the physical prime. But I don't have one, so. And I don't need one because this is faster. 
And when I run it on my tablet, it's arbitrarily faster. In fact, I bought a cheap tablet, uh, which is about the size of the Prime physical. You know, like for 29 bucks, it runs just fine. Okay. So, anyway, all right. I'm going to end this video. You tell me if I turn the screen off.